Hello and welcome back to the Simple Game Dev. My name is Remy Storms and in the previous video we imported some packages that we are going to be using throughout the entire project. Now, in this video we are going to take a look at the animation system inside Unity 5, also referred as Mechanim. So, let's jump right into it. And let's go to our Bumps and Veggies folder. Then you will find one folder that's called FBX. Just click on it, double click on it, and open it. And the model that we are going to be using right now is the surprise box. Um, so for those of you who don't know what an FBX is, it's just basically a file format uh, that it's very commonly used in uh, models and 3D animation and, and all that. So that's why it's called FBX. So let's go to the surprise box file and let's take a look at what it has. I'm going to expand the inspector a little bit so that it's easier to see. So basically this surprise box, and if you, you open the hierarchy, you will see uh, a bunch of different things inside this uh, file. But the most important things that we need right now is to pay attention to the actual surprise uh, box model, which is just basically the mesh data. And this one already has the, the, the texture applied. There's also an armature or um, a skeleton because this uh, particular game object has uh, bone-based animations. And these are the animations, which uh, you can clearly recognize by this uh, play button icon. So in this case, I made a couple of them. I modeled this and animated inside Blender, but you can use uh, whichever software you, you want. So let's take a look at the animations that we have. We have one called close box animation. And if you click on this little icon here, you can preview the animation. We also have a closed box animation which is basically just a keyframe with the closed uh, state of the box. We have another one called open box animation, which, yeah, you guessed it right. It's just the animation of the box opening. And finally, we have an opened box animation, which, again, is just one keyframe uh, of the box in the opened state. Now, why do we need this four different animations if the only thing that we really want to happen with the box is uh, basically open it? If we take a look at the our bullet point, point uh, here, you see that the box, uh, it appears in a closed state. Then when it reaches the middle point, it will open. That's, that's the animation, right? That there's only one opening animation. And then it will destroy. Uh, so why did I make this four animations? Well, that will become apparent in a little bit. So let's start by creating a new folder. And I'm gonna call this folder animators, okay? So now let's open up our animators folder and create an animator controller, not an animation, an animator controller. And I'm going to call it surprise box. Okay, so let's go back to our FBX file. And I'm going to grab the surprise box and I'm going to put it on our uh, stage. Uh, for now, I'm going to hide the spawner because. Uh, we don't care about that right now, so I'm just gonna click on the spawner, and if you click on this little uh, check mark, boom, it will disappear. Now, you didn't destroy it or anything, it's still there, you just hide it to make your life easier, right? So, let's grab our surprise box, and you will see that by default it comes with a transform, just like any other uh, game object, basically, but it also comes with the animator. Um, 
component, right? So what is this animator com com component? So this is a component in charge of uh, handling all the animations and, and transitions that this game object has. So let's go to the animator panel. And if you don't have the animator panel, you just click on the window and animator and boom, you, uh, you will see this, this panel appear. So now if we go back to our animators uh, folder and click on the surprise box, you will see how the animator window changes from that empty, uh, empty window to this uh, window with uh, three nodes, an any state, entry state, and an exit state. So let's start with something very simple. Let's grab the animations that we are going to need uh, from this, this uh, box and drag it and drop it into our animator. So again, let's go back to our FBX folder, open up the surprise box, and let's start by grabbing the closed box. If you drag and drop, bam, it will appear right there. And if you look at it, if you take a look at this, it's automatically connecting the entry node to the box armature, a closed box uh, node that we just uh, placed. And it's also colored orange. That's, uh, that means that it's just the default animation that's gonna play as soon as you start the game. So let's grab the other ones. Again, um, the next one is the close box. Where is the close box animation? Close box, okay. And let's grab the opened box. And lastly, we are going to grab the opened box. That's it. Those are all the animations that we're going to need. And let's start by testing out our uh, animator, right? If we just leave it as is, What's gonna happen is, is as soon as this uh, start, uh, the, the game starts, it's going to take this uh, model into the closed box animation. That's it. But before that, we actually have to add this animator that we just made and put it in the animator controller component, right? So, with the surprise box selected, go to our animators and grab and drag and drop the surprise box into the controller. That's it. That's all you need to do. Now, if you, if we play, click on pre, uh, play, sorry, and give it a couple seconds, I guess, you will see that now your box starts in a closed state, which is really cool, right? And if you take a look at the animator, it will tell you exactly in what uh, state of the animation uh, your your model is, right? So that's it, that's pretty cool and handy when you have a lot of different animations and transitions. Uh, so, okay, let's, let's stop this for a second. If we go back to our Photoshop file, we will see that the only thing that this uh, box needs to do is appear closed, which we already have, right? Uh, go to the wait point and then open, uh, play the, the open animation. So let, let's do that here in Unity. Let's go back to our animator and start doing some connections. So if you right click on the Actually, let me just uh, rearrange them so that it's easier to see. So from the closed box, uh, the only thing that can happen is go to the open box animation, right? So let's connect that one by, I'm just gonna do it again. Right click on the make transition. And then if you 
move your mouse and hover to the next uh, note, you will see how it it actually snaps into the, the possible note. So let's connect that one to the open box animation. And then from the open box animation, because we don't want this animation to be looping, right? Like uh, like it was doing here on the on the preview. So after this uh, open box animation is complete, we want this to make a transition to the actual closed box state, right? Because the closed box state will stay there. I mean, sorry, uh, to the opened state. So let's do that uh, connection again. Right click, make transition, connect it to the opened box. And then again, from the open box, maybe we want to close the box later on, right? We don't know that. So let's put the system right there. So make transition and connect it. Make transition, and that's it. We close the loop, right? So what do you think it will happen if we press play right now? So let's take a look. So as you can see, the animator um, is telling you exactly what's happening with, with your model, right? So it starts in the closed box, it opens as soon as it's done, uh, it stays in the open box for a second or, or, or maybe less, and it keeps doing that. Now, we don't really want this to happen. We don't want this to be an infinite loop. So in order to do that, we need to specify when do we want these transitions to happen, right? So now if we click on the arrows between um, our nodes, you can see that there is one field here called conditions. Now conditions, as it names uh, the name implies, there are the conditions that needs to be met in order for this uh, transition to happen. So let's create two conditions here in the parameters. Uh, click on the plus button and let's add a trigger. Now triggers happens, uh, they happen only once. Uh, if, if you call them, that's it. It's just like a, like a toggle button maybe. It's just a quick uh, switch, so to speak. So I'm gonna call this open box and I'm going to create another trigger called close box. Now there's um, also float, integer, and boolean parameters. But in this case, we're, we are, we're going to use only the triggers. Now bool is similar to the trigger. However, bool actually stays in the on or off state. Um, true or false. This one is just like a quick press, so to speak. So now that we have uh, declared our uh, parameters here, if you click again in one of the arrows and go to the conditions, you can create one condition. So in this case, uh, it auto selected the opened box condition. But if we, you click on this little arrow, you will see all the parameters that we just created, right? Now, it might be a little bit complicated, but it, it just until you get used to how the system works and um, pretty much the layout. But that's it. So let's let's grab this arrow here between the closed box position and the open animation and select that the condition for this to happen is when we send the signal to open box, okay? Now from this animation, the open box to the opened box, we don't really need anything to happen, right? Because this one is, uh, is uh, going to do the transition automatically. So we don't need to do anything right here. However, in the open box, uh, in order for this one to jump to the other, uh, close box animation, we do want to have a condition. In this case, close box. So that's it. We'll leave the, the other arrow as is, and we're gonna play to see 
what this uh, happened, right? So now you can see how the, the box stays closed and is not jumping between state li uh, like it was doing before. Now it's because it's just waiting for the right signal to jump. Uh, another cool feature that the animator has is that you can actually test those conditions right here in the inspector. Uh, sorry, in the animator. Uh, so let's let's try it out by clicking on the open box state and see what happens. Book. It opens. You can see how it jumped from closed box to open box animation. And as soon as this animation was done, it jumped to the open box. And now, since uh, this animation requires another condition to jump to the next state, it stays there. So if we send the close box signal, it will close. Open box, it will open. And that's it. That's pretty much how the animator system works. So let's uh, stop this video right now and we'll continue on the next one, creating uh, the rest of the surprise box. Thanks so much for watching, see you on the next video.